Hi guys, I would like to talk about uh, one of my favorite examples. It's a kind of a weird example, but I think a perfect one to understand, to check whether you understood the concept of Nash equilibrium or not. So here's uh, how the game is. Uh, there are two players, uh, player one and player two. Um, so each player is simultaneously and independently choosing, picking a number between zero uh, to infinity, while well, infinity is not a number. Um, so basically they are picking a positive, strictly positive real number. So S1 and S2, the set of strategies uh, are equal to zero infinite open interval, all right? So any positive real number is, is okay. Uh, but again, it doesn't have to be integer, uh, it can be real number. Um, by the way, it could be natural numbers, the set of naturals could be just fine, but anyway, just leave it as, as is. Um, well, what is the payoffs? Well, the payoff for each player, once they pick S1, S2, so these are just numbers, is going to be S1 times S2, all right? As simple as this. So the bigger number they pick, uh, you know, more utilities they will, or more payoffs they will get. So the question is, what is or are the Nash equilibrium of this game? Well, the answer is um, in pure strategies, obviously. I, I, I don't talk about mixed strategies. There is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. Well, why so? Well, uh, so kind of simple. There's a few reasons. I mean, there's, there, there are a few ways to explain this. Well, first of all, uh, for any SJ, the, you know, the strategy of the uh, player J, the best response for player I, given that his or her opponent has picked SJ, is actually an empty set, all right? Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means, so to visualize things, let's suppose uh, we're talking about player one and player two selected 100, all right? So question is, what is the best response for player one if his opponent has selected 100? Hmm. So don't forget, the best response is basically the best strategy, all right? So here, um, 100 is not a best response. By the way, the proper way is this, because, you know, best response can be set, but I'm going to ignore these brackets just for notational simplicity. So 100 is not a best response. Why not? Well, because if player one selects 100, right? So let's calculate player one's payoff if he selects 100 and his opponent also selected 100. Well, it's going to be 100 times 100, so it's uh, 10,000, all right? So, I mean, imagine this is like, you know, whatever number you pick, a bank is going to pay you this much cash, and let's suppose the bank has no limit for cash. So you're going to be paid $10,000. Well, but the thing is, if I, for example, select instead of 100, 200, which I can select, right, my, because my strategies are in between zero infinity, well, I would actually make $20,000. Well, you may say, uh, why 200? You can select 300. Yeah, of course you can select. My point is, whatever number you pick, so given your opponent's strategy, whatever number you pick, there will always be a better number that you could pick. And so for that reason, there's going to be no best number you could pick. And hence, the best response uh, is going to be an empty set. All right? Um, well, because of this, remember the Nash equilibrium says a strategy profile S1, S2 is a Nash equilibrium if S1 is a best response to S2, but you know, the best response for player one is an empty set, so therefore no strategy is going to be best response, and hence there can't be any Nash equilibrium. Well, for this you may have to, uh, you know, think a, a bit more or sort of verify this. Uh, you can say, well, why not really, for example, a million, I mean, put as many zeros as you like, and you know, the other guy is doing the same thing, two, four, six, zero. Uh, well, why not this in Nash equilibrium? Well, boy, it's still the same thing. There's always a bigger number that you could pick, right? So remember, Nash equilibrium is a stability concept, is a is a is an outcome, 
uh, the Nash equilibrium is picking outcomes, uh, the uh, profiles of outcomes where no player is going to regret. So here or here, all right, whatever S2 your opponent picks, you will always regret from your choice. And that's simply because your payoffs are always increasing. You will never say enough to the you know, additional money. And so, and because there is no upper limit, obviously you are always going to find a better number and the better number. And so you will never settle for the best. Okay, so there's no pure Nash equilibrium in this game. Well, if I change this game slightly, for example, instead of saying, um, you are allowed to choose any number but positive. What if I tell you that you could choose zero infinity, meaning you can choose zero or a, a, you know, a number higher than zero? Uh, what would be different? Well, this time, the same question, is there in an Nash equilibrium? The answer is yes. But this time, the only, the unique, Nash equilibrium is both players playing zero, all right? Well, why is this Nash equilibrium? Well, look, my opponent, let's say I'm player one. My opponent, I learned that my opponent selected zero. What would be, I mean, would I regret from my choice? No, because, because my opponent has selected zero, I'm going to get zero payoff, whatever number I pick, right? So therefore, I will never say, should, I should have selected, say, 10,000 or 1 million. Who cares? The numbers will be multiplied and I'm going to get zero anyway. So therefore, I mean, that means the best response for a first player when his opponent is playing zero is actually um, any number in this interval. And similarly, including zero. And the, so zero is in this set. And the, the, the second player's best response is also zero infinity interval. And again, zero is in this set. So therefore, zero, zero is a Nash equilibrium because these two hold. All right. Uh, well, why is it unique? Maybe this is a bit more challenging, but exactly the reason uh, that I sort of uh, gave you why there is no Nash equilibrium uh, when zero is not included in this set. Remember, any positive number, S1, S2, where S1 and S2, they are different than, uh, they're different than zero. So S2 is different than zero. So there's no such Nash equilibrium no Nash of this form. Uh, I mean, you can verify, right? Just guess and verify. For example, why 0, 100 is not Nash? Well, isn't that obvious? The player one is going to regret from his choice. Uh, he's going to say, look, I selected zero. My opponents, I just learned that my opponent selected 100. So my payoff is zero times 100, zero dollars. But if I instead selected 100, I would actually make 10,000. So again, here, my best response as player one, given that my opponent is selecting 100, is an empty set, all right? But that doesn't mean that there's a better strategy, better than zero, all right? You see what I mean? So be careful, this is not Nash. Yes, because BR100 is an empty set, so zero is not a best response, and hence it can't be Nash equilibrium, all right? But that also means that 0, 100, another way of uh, reading this, uh, you know, 0, 100 is not Nash equilibrium is the following, because player one has better strategy, all right? You know, better than zero, uh, but she doesn't have the best strategy. So this, the idea of there's no best is making there's no Nash equilibrium when somebody's selecting a positive number. But when somebody's selecting zero, well, then there is a Nash where both are actually playing zero. Okay? Well, uh, I give, I mean, I like this example uh, partly because it shows that in a game like this, all right, uh, I mean, just select a number uh, higher than or equal to zero. If two guys play this game, uh, they would probably select some large numbers, but no one would select zero, zero, right? I mean, so it basically shows that Nash equilibrium is a solution concept with its own flows. I mean, it's not an appropriate solution concept for all type of games. So this is just one example where it really doesn't 
uh, make sense. So maybe we should be looking at uh, different solution concepts other than Nash equilibrium. Um, but at least if we modify this game and say, you know what, you can pick a number between 0 and 100, but no more than 100. What would be the Nash equilibrium? Well, then in this case, yes, we do have Nash equilibrium. One of them is still awkward. 0, 0 is still Nash. But there's another sort of reasonable Nash equilibrium outcome. 100, 100 is also Nash. Well, the question is why 100-100 is a Nash equilibrium all of a sudden? Well, because the best response for player 1, given that his opponent has selected 100, is now 100. All right? Well, why is that so? There is no better number. Because better number, 101, 10,000, they're not allowed strategies. So you can't choose them. So the best strategy, the best strategy given that your opponent is choosing 100, or in fact any S2, other than zero, right? So any number other than zero, uh, so for example, 80 or 10, my best response as player one is 100, okay? So therefore, same for the second player, obviously, best response for the second player, given that the first guy selects 100, is 100. So you know what, 100, 100 is a Nash equilibrium. But again, zero, zero is still Nash, because given that my opponent is selecting zero, uh, playing zero is the best response because whether I choose positive number or not, uh, my, my number will be multiplied by zero and hence I'm going to get zero payoff. And so I'm indifferent sort of between zero and any other positive number. So zero is the best response. Um, so don't forget, once again, Nash equilibrium is a stability concept. Are we going to uh, regret from our choices once we learn the outcome of this game. And here, the 0, zero outcome is regret-free, quote and quote. Um, 100, 100 is, I mean, obviously regret-free, but in a game like you can choose uh, only positive uh, real numbers, well, in this game, you will always regret from the final choice because there's always a better number, okay? So be careful about all these.